Welcome, I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, Code of Conduct Tribunal fixes April 18th to deliver judgment in the case of false declaration and non-declaration of assets against the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge. Birthday celebrations turns tragic as 15 people are killed and 11 others injured in an attack on Kotru village in Akwanga, local government area of Nasarawa State. Acting Inspector General of Police vows to hold area commanders, DPOs and line officers responsible for infractions by policemen under their command. And fire engulfs the iconic Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Firefighters battle to put blaze out. On business news tonight, Nigeria's Minister of Budget and National Planning gives details of his presentation on the state of the country's economy after the just concluded meetings of the World Bank and IMF. On sports news tonight, Liverpool marked the 30th anniversary of the Hillsborough disaster, the worst tragedy in British sporting history. And from Abuja, a group demands justice for victims of extrajudicial killings in Nigeria, insist those behind the death of NSCDC official Oga Jumbo must be brought to book. After a three-month-long trial on six counts of false assets declaration and non-declaration of assets, the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onoge, will finally know his fate on Thursday, April the 18th. Now, that's the date fixed for judgment by the Chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal, Mr. Danladi Umar, who also announced that rulings will be delivered in the two motions earlier filed by Justice Onoge. Our correspondent, Amaka Okafo, reports. After a two-week recess to enable parties file their final addresses, the tribunal has reconvened to enable them adopt the addresses. Present in court is the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogen. In adopting his final address, Justice Onogen's counsel, Mr. Okun Nkanu, asked the tribunal to dismiss the six-count charge against his client on the grounds that the prosecution failed to prove the essential ingredients of the charges beyond reasonable doubt. He argued that for the prosecution to succeed, the elements of each count in the six-count charge must be well established, and without that, the tribunal must rule in the favor of the defendant. Mr. Nkanu told the tribunal that from the asset declaration form of Justice Onogen, which was admitted by the tribunal as exhibit, it is clear that the claims of Justice Onogen were not verified by the Code of Conduct Bureau as required by law and therefore the charges against him were based on hearsay and not a lawful action of verification by the Bureau. The prosecutor, Mr. Ali Umar, on his part, argued that all the essential ingredients of the charges have been proved beyond reasonable doubt and prayed the tribunal to uphold his submissions. The essential ingredients is the falsity of declaration and the failure to declare and we contend that both were missing. The prosecution was unable to prove those elements which are essential for any conviction. Their contention is that we have not proved our case. Our own contention is that we have proved the, our case beyond reasonable doubt, and it's for the tribunal to now make a decision whether or not what they contend is true or what we contend is true. With this decision, Justice Walter Onogen will on the 18th of April 2019 know his faith as the tribunal will decide one way or the other. Amaka Okafo, Channel Television News. Meanwhile, the trial of a former governor of Katsina State, Ibrahim Shema, and three others continues on May the 27th after a state high court fixed the date in the suit instituted by the state government. The three others are former state commissioner for local government and chieftaincy affairs, Mr. Sani Makana, the former permanent secretary of the ministry, Lawa Rufai, and the former Argon chairman, Lawal Dankaba. They are alleged to have conspired and diverted the sum of 11 billion naira from the state Argon account while in government. According to the lead counsel to former Governor Shima, the adjournment was necessary to enable the defense to produce more witnesses. Conducting a trial within trial to determine the, uh, the voluntariness of the statement made by the fourth defendant in this matter. We've called four witnesses. 
in, def in, uh, in our defense. And we still have more witnesses to call. So we ask for an adjournment to enable us to produce our remaining witnesses. Obviously, the council leading the defending the four defendants came with two witnesses, which we took. And the matter was now further adjourned to 27th of May for continuation of the trial, within trial, with respect to the statement of the fourth defendant. And for the immediate past governor of Okiti State, Ayo Fayoshi, his trial continues today at the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos with the 11th prosecution witness, Mr. Sunday Alade, testifying. Mr. Alade, who said he was the branch manager of a commercial bank in Akure in 2014, told the court how the sum of 1.2 billion naira was allegedly moved to his branch. He also narrated how he was instructed to provide security and a bullion van to pick up the cash from the airport. He said when they arrived at the bank, the money was counted in his presence and it was 724 million naira. They were later informed that there was a balance of 494 million naira, which they later went to the airport to pick up. When asked if those who walked away from the aircraft when it landed, the witness told the court that one of them resembled Senator Obanikuru. The court has adjourned sitting till May the 10th and the 14th when another witness is expected to testify for the prosecution. And staying with the judiciary, the Federal High Court in Lagos has ordered the temporary forfeiture of a property in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital, allegedly linked to the former Petroleum Minister Dezani Alison Madweke. The order follows a motion ex parte filed and argued by the EFCC, alleging that the property is suspected to be the proceeds of unlawful activity. Justice Chuka Obiozo ruled that the property located at the old GRA in River State is linked to Mrs. Alison Madweke lawyer Donald Chi Diamango and a company Sequoia Properties Limited. The court also directed that all persons interested in the said property are to be put on notice to give reasons why the final order of forfeiture of the affected property to the federal government ought not to be made by the court. The suit has been adjourned to May the 9th for further proceedings. Now let's take a look at some security matters. 15 persons have been reported dead and 11 injured in a fresh attack on Numa Kuchu village in Akwanga local government area of Nasarawa state. The Assistant Commissioner of Police in charge of operations in Nasarawa state, DCP Umar Shehu Nadada, who confirmed the incident to Channel's television, said it occurred on Sunday night. According to him, some residents of the community were celebrating a birthday party when the gunman struck. Our correspondent Halima Gayam has an update. Police, gunmen attacked Kochu village of Akonga local government area of Nasarawa state on Sunday night. In the process, 15 persons, including a pregnant woman, were killed and 11 people injured. The incident occurred during a birthday party of a young boy whose mother is among the deceased and father among the injured. This is coming on the heels of recent attacks in neighboring villages of Minte, Katanza and Needham of the same local government area. Though the police say adequate security presence have been deployed and normalcy restored, all the women in the village have fled their homes, leaving their husbands behind, and they are currently taking refuge in Andaha local government area. Halima Gayam, Channels Television News. How fair is the fight against corruption by President Muhammadu Buhari's administration? Has the acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission been successful in discharging his duties? Well, many questions are raised every day about this. And in our next report, our correspondent, Orelua Shunibare, takes a look at the response of the government to the situation. I will not stop pointing fingers to those who have illegally taken or abused trust by taking money from the trust given to them by the system in the country. A resolute President Muhammadu Buhari restating his commitment to rid the country of corruption. Charged with this responsibility is the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and this man, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, as the captain of the ship. And he has shown a lot of proactiveness in creating awareness on the need to bring corruption to his knees. It is doable. 
What I mean is corruption can be killed. The only problem with this country, the most serious problem with this country is corruption. If we can get rid of corruption, the work is done. If the success rate can be connected to the number of high-profile cases being brought to the open, then it may be said that the bite of the EFCC is being felt. So much that the spotlight has also been beamed on the system meant to see to the administration of justice. Which leaves many wondering how this war can be won. The people that you know constitute the uh, you know uh, menace of corruption, they are more you know powerful than actually the people that are fighting corruption in the country. For example, um, a lot of people who have looted money, they still have access to uh, bringing in confusion and uh, making it look as if they are just being selected for victimization when they have looted and destroyed the country. Steering the drive towards purging the nation from decades of corruption is not an easy task. But the reality is that something has to give. Oralu Ashunibare, Channels Television News. The Kaduna State Governor Nasser Al Rafai has inaugurated a Judicial Commission of Inquiry into the persistent conflicts in Kajuru local government area of the state. The commission is to be charged by Justice Issa Aliu of the State High Court. A statement issued by the Governor's spokesperson Samuel Adwan says the establishment of the commission is equal to the promise made by the Governor to uncover the immediate and remote causes of the crisis with a view to addressing them. The terms of reference of the Commission of Inquiry include investigating and identifying the immediate and remote causes of all disturbances in Kajuru and surrounding communities in 2017 to date, identifying individuals, traditional and religious institutions and other associations that might have contributed to the disturbances, as well as establishing the extent of loss of lives of property and other forms of damage. Of course, on our screen there, you can see some of the other terms of reference of the Commission. The Nigerian Air Force has released the video of its latest air operation against armed bandits' hideouts in Zampara State. The video shows Air Force jets destroying some logistics stores belonging to the bandits at a location within Kagara Forest. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Air Force is promising to provide air support to the multinational joint task force conducting operations around the Lake Chad area. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, says more technicians are air fighting personnel are being deployed to the theater of operations. The thing is not just about fighting, it's equally about ensuring that the personnel that are fighting are taken care of. And that's why we have the uh, uh, technician school room, which we have commissioned, and we have also commissioned a block of uh, 30 units of accommodation for our airmen that are posted here. I'm sure you are aware that the outside temperature here is about 44 degrees centigrade. So those that have been working in sun to arm our aircraft, to repair our machines and make sure that these aircraft are flyable and serviceable, uh, should have a place to rest after a day's work. Meanwhile, the multinational joint task force says its troops have killed at least 27 Boko Haram insurgents terrorizing the Lake Chad region. In a statement to the Chief of Military Public Information of the Multinational Joint Task Force, Colonel Timothy Atinga, says several weapons, including two anti-aircraft guns, rocket-propelled grenades, and two general-purpose machine guns, were recovered from the terrorists. The MNJTF says it's working to deliver its mandate on securing the Lake Chad region in line with the agreements reached at the summit of the heads of state and governments of countries of the Lake Chad Basin. The task force adds that Boko Haram remains a threat to everyone in the Lake Chad area, irrespective of religion or creed. In part two, after the break, acting IGP Muhammad Adamu vows to bring officers responsible for extrajudicial killings in the country. That's in a moment. New states.